Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with how to make your own brick hibachi style grill. That's right, whenever we do a grilling video, I always get people emailing me telling me how much they love that style of grill and where can they get one? To which I reply, unfortunately you can't. They do not make this model anymore. And while they still do a gas version, everybody knows that charcoal grilling is a million times better. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to make virtually the exact same grill using regular old bricks. So let me show you how to do this. It's very simple. First thing we're gonna need is some flat ground. Okay, so please don't attempt this on a steep slope. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down a base of bricks. I'm gonna go with 12. And by the way, I use wood chips as a ground cover. So I did water this down before I started. Nothing puts a damper on a backyard cookout like a wildfire. Hey, how was Joe's barbecue? Well, except for the burns on my ankle, it was great. Okay, so safety first, spray everything down. But anyway, we're gonna lay down 12 bricks in kind of a rectangle shape. And you will note I'm not pressing these tightly together. I do want about a quarter inch space in between them, which is gonna provide a little bit of airflow underneath the coals, which is kind of a big deal. And then once we've aced the base, let's go ahead and do one more layer of bricks, but this time we're gonna put them up on their side. And I'm gonna use eight bricks, two on each side, and I'm gonna go all the way around with those. And what specifically is determining how exactly I lay this layer out is gonna be the shape of the grates I'm using, which you're gonna see in a minute. So when you actually do this yourself, you might need to make yours round or square or even more rectangular. It's gonna depend on what you place on top, okay? And then once those bricks are laid down and arranged into the appropriate positions, I'm gonna go ahead and lay my grates down to test. Really, the only thing that can go wrong here is that grate would fall into the fire while you're cooking. So make sure there's plenty of support underneath. So that's looking pretty good. And believe it or not, that's pretty much all there is to it. And by the way, speaking of greats, check out the blog post. I'm gonna give you some ideas on where to find those, but that's really not too hard. And at that point, I'm gonna take those off because we gotta put coals in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my coals. And while we're waiting, let me show you one very cool thing. If you want, you can actually tip these bricks over and you'll have your grates even closer to the coals, which is really, really nice for high heat searing. So because I'm demoing with some chicken breasts, I'm not gonna do it. But if I did wanna do something like skirt steak or flank steak, where you want a really super high heat sear, that would be perfect. But I'm doing chicken, so I'm gonna put them back on their sides. And once our coals are ready, and I'm just using one of these chimney style starters, we're gonna go ahead and dump those in. And then you wanna spread those out a little bit into an even layer. And why am I using a garden trowel for that? Because it works, and it was right there. And at that point, we're gonna lay down our grates so they can get nice and hot before we start grilling. And by the way, if you only remember one thing from this video, do not put the meat on the grill until your coals are white. All right, we never wanna put food down on top of coals that are still on fire or still black. Okay, so if you know somebody that does that and everything they grill tastes terrible, send them this video anonymously. Okay, it might help. But anyway, when your coals are white and your grates are hot, then and only then can we start to cook. And I like to give the grates a little rub with an oiled paper towel. And then we'll go ahead and put down our meat, in my case, a couple nice chicken breasts. And by the way, you're gonna see those breasts in an upcoming video. That was from an experiment I did using pickle juice as a brine for chicken. Very interesting, so stay tuned for that. And don't get me wrong, those big kettle style grills that most people have in the backyards, those are great for lots of things, especially if you're roasting or smoking a whole chicken or pork shoulder, or leg of lamb, something like that. But when you're doing steaks or chicken breasts or stuff you wanna sear really quickly, high heat, shorter cooking times, I really, really prefer these shallow style grills, which I call hibachi style. And then one other trick here, if you were cooking something that you did want to cover for a little bit, you could actually use one of these bowl style terracotta planters to invert over your food like that. And you've basically made yourself a little clay oven. But since I'm doing chicken breasts, I really don't need that here. So I'm going to take that off. And the reason I can use my bare hands is because this was only on for 10 seconds. Or if you use that for real, you're going to want to use some heat proof gloves or a wooden dowel to move that around. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I'm going to pull my chicken off. And then once that's cold, you can go ahead and scatter those ashes into your garden. I hear that's good for the soil or at least that's what they said in that documentary about forest fires. And then you can just go ahead and pile those bricks up in some corner of your garden until the next time you want to grill. So whether you're doing this because you want to simulate the old Chef John grill, or maybe you only cook out a couple times during the summer and you don't want to invest in a grill, this is perfect for that. But anyway, that's it. A quick and literally dirty video on how to make your own brick hibachi style grill in just a couple minutes. Not only does it work great, but it looks really cool too. Plus, when people ask you about it, you'll be able to tell them about Food Wishes, okay? So I really hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for, well, there's no ingredient amounts, but there will be a lot more info, as usual. And as always, enjoy!